of a weekend i mean it wasn't just a good night of fights it was probably some of the best fights any of you fans that have been listening to welcome back to lat b let's the bean coming at you 217 in the books how was your weekend remember to like and subscribe anywhere oh my god best card i've ever seen i this is i haven't been watching as long as you best card i have ever in seen in a long time it's the best card that's been around and i almost slipped on my, my socks i had socks on in my house and i almost slipped like i was in ice skates ufc 189 was probably the only one off the top of my head that i could think of that rivaled it with the amount of upsets and just movement that ended up happening finishes at six seven finishes throughout the night and it started off devastating hashtag and news oh. and new and new we will get into all that. Oh, we got time. The whole thing was amazing. And take those cards away. Take the three main events away or the three belt title defenses. Agreed. The card itself was still really great. It mm. still had every all the other bit of drama. Um, it, before we even got to the champions potentially taking over, humongous upsets coming through, and we had all sorts of weird disqualifications and or fighters trying to leave the fight. One time it worked out, one time it didn't, and the same young ref, it was unbelievable. Do you end up catching that ref? I forgot his name. I think it was his debut in the UFC as well, but he started off the night. Um, I yeah, guess we were in New York. The we were in New York, which the UFC fighters do have to pay an extra tax for fighting in New York specifically, which is why John Jones and other fighters have already stated that they're... Is it just like a state fight. tax? It's a like, New York tax because... Well, because Oregon would have a state tax. But it's it, because they came in last, New York came in last with it, they got to make the regulations. And in the new regulations, it was that fighters had to pay a certain amount of tax to fight in the state of New York. Um, John Jones from New York, and he's like, sorry, guys, I'm not going to fight there. They want X amount of my purse, and I earn that money. And rightfully so, if 49 other states and the rest of the world doesn't tax you, guess where I'm fighting other than? <laughs> I'm just saying. So I agree. You have all the, everywhere else in the world to fight. Yeah, every, every other part. And they might and even pay you extra judges, to come fight. There's a lot of sketchy decisions, which I am so glad that this card had instant replay or it I mean, it was already screwy, but I do think the instant replay helped. I would agree, and I can't wait to see how much more often that is going to... We can start from the bottom to the top. Right, and we ended up starting the night with, I mean, Zahabi versus Ricardo Ramos. We were pronouncing it wrong by pronouncing it with R's, Ricardo Ramos. It's Ricardo Ramos, the way he wanted it pronounced. And like I said, that young man, hell of a fighter. Really has, uh, his gas tank wasn't that, was a little lacking for me, um, but that pressure, strength, and he was diverse in all facets of the fight. Again, his transitions are his hardest part, his wrestling is, but his jiu-jitsu and his striking is so good that he's going to go far and be able to gain that middle ground. Um, Zahabi was putting on good pressure and stifling Hamos a little bit in that fight, but, uh, the gas tank was showing for Hecardo. 
and he ended up get, actually getting two spinning elbows. They only highlighted the one that finished him, uh, Zahabi, but prior to that, a few seconds before, he caught him with another elbow that didn't stun him, and to Zahabi's credit, he kept pressing forward, and a lot of people that said he had a lot of can fights, um... Zahabi still had a good showing there. I think Hamos is, though, legitimately a contender. Zahabi's going to have a few fights to stick around. He's, he's going to learn a lot from this fight, um, whether he wants to come back from it at all, because that was pretty nice. We started off the night with somebody going directly to pretty the hospital. Brutal. Right to the hospital. It was all over the highlights on Fight Pass. Um, what did you end up catching in that fight? That you, did you end up seeing that fight that night? I'll probably stay away from both fighters. It depends who they're going up against. Ramos or uh, Hamos is good, but I'm not a huge fan of Zahabi. I agree. I think he w we were saying that he was hyped, so therefore he w I his skills weren't there. Hamos on a few cards, Me and too. I was glad that I did. Me too. It was definitely a great call to have Hamos on quite a few of those. Um, moving on to the next fight, we ended up having a heavyweight bout between i'm having some it's heavyweight 265 curtis blades versus oleski olenek olenek and this ended up the instant re replay ended up coming into this fight uh olenek wasn't able to take blades down as we were stating on the podcast here and the striking was really coming forward i really like how blades striking is coming along it's getting better and better apparently he's uh training with the current Dante, Deontay Wilder and doing boxing camps with him right now, who's a 6'3 monster as well. So uh, Blades, I still think, is growing a bit. Uh, he went right into Olenek's guard a few times. He took him down quite a few times and actually was really strong, uh, which, again, Blades looked good to me. Yeah, all the way around. I don't think Olenek is somebody to take lightly. A lot of other Agreed. people, they don't give him enough props in the sport. I did. I actually had him on this, which wasn't the smart thing to do. But... I don't think he's an easy walkthrough fight that a lot of other people did. So Curtis Blades getting through him, I'll put I, I have faith in Curtis Blades going forward that I didn't have in him before this fight. So that's... definitely, and he was an underdog on tap at the last second as well. Uh, I think still the betting favorite though. Either way, um, then we started off well with the one of the bigger upsets. I was all over Mickey Gall on this fight. Uh, his striking is really, really lacking. and I was too. And then when you really look at who he's gone up against, I, there was no reason for us to think that. We uh, were just hyper. We, he, he's good. He's good. He, yeah. he sold us. But on the the ground, he really looked. Randy Brown looked amazing. All credit to that young man. He's actually looking much, much better in that Belial Muhammad fight. I didn't give him enough credit for it. He didn't get dominated. He was winning that fight at a point in time. And he showed that his top control and Mickey Gall's ground con, uh, defense is just not up to par. I think other people can do that to Mickey Gall as well. Mickey Gall is going to be in a unique situation because he's not going to be able to call out like he's been able to because with a win you kind of have that yeah in your back pocket and now with a loss he's just kind of at the mercy of the ufc and they might not favorably ma favorably match him up compared to other fights that he may have have had in the past but randy brown i like him it'll like be him. interesting to me with mickey gall going forward he is so young so i'm i'm sure we're gonna see His him again and was again atrocious atrocious and his ground game wasn't that great. And yeah, that's what his yeah, strong suit. Exactly. It's, he got beat up for three rounds. And, oh, someone who's young in the sport but long in the tooth when it comes to the cheating. Mickey Gall was grabbing the fence with his fingers, toes, nose, and grabbing the inside of the glove. Mickey Gall wasn't, try, wasn't not trying to, to win that fight. He was just using other methods other than fighting of winning that did you happen to hear all of the corrections he's green he's a greenhorn if he were on a crab boat he'd be the greenhorn like if he was <laughs> but he was also crafty and i've wrestled guys like this before that they know where to grab you how to grab you illegally when the ref's on the other side because they're as much as they're wrestling you Floyd Mayweather they're shit. paying attention to the ref exactly so all of a sudden you're like they're hooking me they're hooking me and it's an illegal move and mickey gall all goddamn day but uh i'm betting against mickey gall in a lot of other fights 
moved to 155, been against Mickey Gall. In the Mickey Gall against fight. Sage Northcutt, too. I might have Sage Northcutt in that, and I uh, am no, a hater. I, I think it's still Northcutt is pretty green, too. I agree. I yeah. agree. I just think the experience that he, the people he's gone against to me are higher caliber. Randy Brown's the first step. And, you know, this is the thing with Randy Brown, even though he wins. <laughs> I like him. I will remember, well, he beat Mickey Gall. It'll yeah. put question in but my head on the he win with He was this. a physical specimen. I mean, yeah. he was physically all the way there. And in every position he was in, Mickey Gall does have a pretty good ground game with being a purple belt out of the gyms he's out of. But uh, Randy Brown had to have a level of technique and physical strength, and it showed. I think Randy Brown can do that to other people, and he did that to Belial Muhammad. Do you put him on times. a one-to-watch list? I think that he's getting on there, and is it that Mickey Gall hype transferring, or is it that I saw a young man with really good hips and a good gas tank and educated? Because Randy Brown was smart in that fight. He was, yeah, exactly. Uh, exactly. He took. He's taken bigger steps than Mickey Gall by far. So... Interesting matchups for him, but he could be a good underdog in other fights because... Randy Brown, one to watch. Yep, 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 yep. Moving on to the next fight, we had OSP versus uh, Anderson, and we told you to kind of pepper this around if you could, but uh, that wrestling was paying off for Anderson for a little while. Uh, and the takedown. It really was, and I, I was fucking shitting my pants there for a bit. <laughs> I was like... <laughs> oh, shit, holy, he's got it. He's and, wrestling and he it. He took a couple it. of good shots he that I'm ate, like, he ate the worst of them. He ate initially that same kick, and his mouthpiece flew one way, and the ref stopped the bout to get his mouthpiece in where he was hurt, and that ref was also... A little bit. Corey iffy. Anderson was the one I had on a lot of my cards to be able to afford a meaty card. It didn't. It wasn't awful because he did have all those takedowns yeah. and reversals. They had a lot of reversals between them. But the worst is I really. He. I had him winning. The fight. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh, he's gonna win. He really is gonna pull it out. I don't have Corey Anderson anywhere going forward, and I still am not a huge fan of OSP. He gassed just like we thought he was going to. He really threw his best shots. It really was kind of not that anything's lucky. He was only on like a two-week notice for the fight. Yeah. But it was looking sketchy there for OSP. OSP horribly gassed, as we said as well. Yeah, that's what I just said. Yeah, yeah Earl, but I, it's just uh, <laughs> everything we said in this fight was absolutely true, so... That was a good play, if you're listening. Yeah, I still stay away from OSP going I forward. I agree forward. And He's a fade. Anderson can really... I hate to Get. say this. It's time for him to hit the trail. Get out of here. Get out of here. <laughs> <laughs> so, moving on to the next fight. We had Mark Godbeer, a heavyweight we versus Walt show. Harris. This fucking shit show. Are you fucking kidding me? Two times in a row this fight's essentially fallen out. We had a fighter looking for a way out. He got it. It came through for him. And he ended up... Uh, Actually playing We're the minority, the I think, on this, but we both see it the same way. <laughs> that Gray's... No, no, no. That this isn't a, the no, one... This is... Yeah, right. This isn't the Gray's year. This is... The, the Gray's year was Olenek, wasn't after the, it? Right. Olenek and Olenek played. lost that via yeah. TKO. We skipped that somehow. Yeah. Well, we talked about the fight. Right, right, right. It just, we forgot about, because the dis the reason we didn't go into because it. Because it was is, rightly called. It was rightly called Bayless because. was going to win that anyways. It, Blades was going to win that regardless. Because of the, uh... Uh, instant replay. Right, right. It came so. through and it worked out for us. But this is where this is where it went wrong, and so I'm remembering it. Motherfucker, he was looking for a way out. He said the he same thing. He was getting his arse beat. Yep, and he's like, I can't see, I can't see. And as soon as the doctor heard, I can't see. We know that that doctor was quick to call fights as of earlier as well. Um, so he looked for a way out, and they gave God Beer the TKO. He didn't deserve that. We were saying that with Watt Harris, I think he threw that kick, and I think the announcer with Rogan and them being like, oh, he could have – that." he was saying time as he was throwing that kick. Um, his, the, his big, huge uh, tree trunk of a leg was already yeah, at 3 o'clock. And then time, 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 you, time, you time, see time. the ref's hand come in. He He's not even time. paying attention to the ref. Yeah, his eyes are on the I head of the kill, 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 kill. So then you see the ref's hand hit his chest. He didn't do that maliciously. He I was agree. just like, everyone's argument is he felt his knee hit his cup. He felt his knee. But I really watched that over and over again. It kind of looks like he hit the top of his cup and not right, right in the... that's what preceded the initial time stoppage was... 
a groin shot by Harris and the ref was trying to stop it and yep. then Harris landed a kick. And then I'm like, okay. It's because the Godier instant- said I couldn't see. So therefore the ref is forced or not the ref, the doctor's forced to make a call and he called it off. And then the refs are like, fuck, what are we going to call it? They should have been a no contest at the very least. I hope we see that fight again. No, I don't want to. It's already been scheduled twice. Well, I don't want <laughs> Godbeer to get to go forward with a win on his record. Oh, he won the it, fight. That's the irritating the thing. Yeah. I, I, if if oh, they were going to go to a sport. disqualification on Harris, right. I would have been like, okay, whatever. Harris is safe. The UFC is going to keep. Yeah, both I understand, of them, right? but if they would have done the disqualification and the match should have been or a draw no or a no contest, right. I would've, yeah, it was just and a really wrong, shit call. It, and Godbeer was looking. Well, Harris really or Godbeer did nothing to deserve the win of that fight except take a knee so, to the groin. <laughs> fading Godbeer, as I was saying prior to this fight. Yeah. From here on out, Godbeer is just the only way he was going to get that win was the way he did. Harris was taking over that fight. Harris, looking good, took a couple shots in that fight that, again... I thought Harris looked better than he had in yeah, previous fights. really fight. light on his feet for a heavyweight. He looked that very athletic. I thought he looked good. Um, I thought he looked in good shape for Walt Harris. Yeah, I agree. So, I definitely think Harris, somebody to look out for. Uh, again, somebody with a better gas tank. Always be scared with him. But Godbeer, fade almost all the way around. Whatever, all right. Anything else? Moving on to the next this fight. This is what I'm just going to say. Leslie Smith, underdog pick, coming through strong. I just had to say it clear because for some reason, every time we say it on the podcast, we fuck it up. Leslie yeah. Smith, underdog pick, coming through. <laughs> James Vick. This is the most confident underdog we had coming in at a plus 160. Uh, this fight, I feel like, played out exactly as we said it. It was going to be a heck of a striking match. I feel like I called a round two TKO by Hammer Fists, if you listen to the last cast, and that's exactly what happened. He did start it off prior to that, but all the way around, James Vick dominant in those positions, overwhelming Joseph Duffy, as we were saying before. And someone to continue to watch going forward who doesn't get any easy fights. He doesn't get any easy fights, and for some reason, he's usually an underdog. So I feel like he could be a Leslie Smith underdog pick again in the future. But if you notice, a couple of of our guys are. Like Brian Barberina tends to be one over and over again. I think one time it didn't pay off, but the other two times it did. Right. Uh, James Vick could be one going forward. Leslie Smith herself. (laughs) Leslie Smith herself. We have quite a few. We've had Leslie Smiths that we know might lose the fight, but we think they'll be worth every cent on DraftKings. Agreed, and then they, sometimes they. I think Tanya Evinger, was that, she won, or we didn't. We uh, knew she wasn't gonna win, but we knew she'd make it. We were some of the only people that knew she would get out of round one. Yeah, I had agree with that, but I don't think she was our underdog pick for that reason. I feel like the biggest one has been. I Morocco. want Tanya Evinger versus Noons. That's the fight I want. Who did Evinger just fight? Cyborg. And she's a natural 135 in the champion of Invicta. So uh, if you I take like that. it, it's a different way to join the. Belt. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I Who don't else does Nunes have to fight right now? She's kind of sitting alone up there. There's con- uh, there's contenders. They're in the works. They're working out. We have a couple fights later coming on this weekend. Um, but they're the ladies. Right, we gotta keep fights. shoveling through. So exactly, we have uh next fight moving up. Either way, uh, you made money on James Vick with our play. We're confident in our underdogs for a reason. Sometimes we have them, sometimes we don't. But that's why. And we listen. might pick an underdog, but they're not all Leslie Smith picks. So we'll let you know. Moving on to the next fight, we had Borachina Costa, Eraser versus Johnny Big Sandwich Hendricks. Um, Johnny Hendricks was looking a little loopy prior to weigh-ins, giving some really random explanations and being like, no bad media, no bad media, and specifically saying, hey, maybe they want to bring this guy in to finish me, and guess what happened? Uh, I didn't think he was loopy. I thought he was, like, having fun with the press because he knows how many times this has happened before, and I've seen a few funny memes on YouTube and stuff where it's like, Oh, like, you know the guy on airplane, the first one where he's sweating buckets while he's uh-huh. steering the plane? Uh-huh. It's like that guy 
Johnny meme getting on, or Johnny <laughs> Hendricks getting on the scale. And then it shows like a different movie, sweating, sweating, sweating. Johnny Hendricks yeah, taking off his view. underwear. <laughs> yeah, it's so great. <laughs> That's all everyone was like, so, is he? Is he gonna? Unfortunately, though, Johnny Hendricks is gonna be a fade from here on out in his career in the UFC. Um, he's I hate had to a long push the button. Career. Yeah, I hate but, to push the button. Get it. Get out of here. Get out of here. Get him out of here. Time to go to Bellator. If he's going to fight no, at all. No, thank you very much. Johnny Hendricks is an no, elite you. enough wrestler, and he seems like he has the personality. He should have a gym where he trains yeah, kids. Or just manage the restaurant, because apparently it's not doing so good. Or, Maybe not manage it, because you're going to blow up before. How about this noise. idea, though? Find yourself, and I'm not, he's happy family, I don't mean in this way, but there's so many young women fighters now, and it's such an open canvas, and I think we're seeing proof that... In, in the kind of the TJ Dillashaw method, but of these women fighters that are getting the right coach and they're just having this really beautiful, quick surge resurgence. Mm-hmm. Imagine Johnny Hendricks t- teaching you stuff. So just an idea, Johnny. Maybe you need to find a right lady, teach us some things, be a corner man. I think that's a great idea. Um, so as much as it is a fade on Johnny Hendricks, a borrachina still heck of fight iq he really didn't blow his wad multiple times when he could have johnny hendrick stayed in there and a better fighter is going to be able to come back and get back into the fight but borrachina stayed away enough and landed precision shots beautiful he didn't body get taken down one time by johnny hendrix agreed and he looked well in those defenses so johnny hendrix again being a shell of himself it's we can't we have to back off a little bit um, and here's but the body is I, though by Borrachino. I think beautiful. he's an easy height t- train to ride as far yeah. as his, his looks. looks are concerned. Oh, right, exactly. <laughs> but exactly. I'm not just, I wasn't talking about that at all. <laughs> I actually felt very confident about him going in. I don't think it's just because Hendrix is over. Okay. I think Borrachino, or we have to call him Costa now. Costa. Costa. Uh, I think he's one to watch going forward. I think he looked so good in there and didn't get taken down once by Johnny. Yeah. One time. And he tried, but I don't... Ugh. Again, it's this point of Johnny Hendrix, not him versus yeah. GSP. So. I still really like him going forward. And I, I think agree. he's good looking. And I think Alan Joban better watch his modeling contract. He better watch it. I was thinking that too. I was like, this yeah. hunky kid gonna come get it. <laughs> the eraser gonna erase your modeling jobs. Joe Bam. So moving on to the next fight, we have Steven Thompson winning a decision over Jorge Masvidal. And this was a fight that, as we somewhat predicted, Jorge Masvidal gets into a rhythm and doesn't seem to get out of it and was getting outstruck by a specifically superior striker. He did have a couple of takedown attempts in there, but wasn't able to. That's a credit to Stephen Thompson still being elite. Just because he lost to T-Wood in an incredibly boring fights doesn't mean he's not a quality fighter. Um, I was really interested with Masvidal initially picking apart that front leg with those oblique kicks to the knee because Thompson has bad knees, and he didn't stick with that when I saw it kind of working, but Stephen Thompson is a fucking snake in there. He was stepping in double side. I don't know how I feel about striking. Jorge anymore. It makes me sad to say that. It really does. And I, we've said it here multiple times that he's he's losing these decisions and split decisions because he doesn't have that next gear, and I don't think he has it. And we need people with that next gear. I love him, but I almost and I don't know how you feel about this. You know how we're ride or die for Bullet and Team Game Bread. It's on our everywhere. We have our little poster. Mm-hmm. We have their stand off. I don't know how you feel about Justin Gaethje taking Gamebred's place on the male side of that yet. I do not. I I can't. I can't do that. Not Justin Gaethje. No, no because the Jorge Masvidal. The reason that I feel like we've been such a ride or die is because he is so fundamentally sound as a fighter in most avenues, if not all. In all. I, part for me is his personality and personality, but Gaethje isn't. Even though Gaethje has the credentials, he just doesn't fight that way. I think he's Gaethje is very flawed yet exciting. Um, and I would much rather put my backing into a fighter that is intelligent and also very We're going to have to think aggressive. about it then. Oh, I agree. Yeah. I think that we don't have to put something on it. But what we do know is that, unfortunately, is game bread. We, I don't think we can be behind that train as hard as we could. We can't be pushing that. What about if it becomes the Red King? 
We're not even Bellator that Ooh. much, but it's getting close. I love but, Rory But the now. competition isn't there for Rory, unfortunately. Like, he's just not in there with the best of the best. I think this can move into multiple divisions. This doesn't have to be necessarily uh, uh, Shevchenko and a Jorge. It could be Shevchenko and a... Rose? Exactly. Or maybe not in her because I don't like picking the champion initially right off the bat. We've always been uh, Thug Rose. Spoiler. Spoiler. we <laughs> always been Thug Rose. <laughs> <laughs> Oopsie. Oh. We're getting there. We're getting so, there. I guess. Anyways, we're ride or die team game bread all the time. But are we though? Are we saying we're not saying I don't that? Know. We're not. We're, we're, we're saying we're not. I just, I do feel like we did say. We're picking game bread here, but we're ride or die game bread. That comes with so much bias. Yeah, I feel agreed. like we said it on agreed. the podcast. I would agree hundred percent. And I have to be honest, I had Wonder Boy on some of my draft. I did it. I did it. I did not. I was. <laughs> I wholeheartedly believed in game bread. I didn't believe. I, I did. Didn't, what about if it's all my fault? I didn't believe. I said it, and I didn't believe. I lied to Sounds our like fans. Sounds like a curse to me. Sounds to, like a curse. I need to not lie to our fans. I agree 100% you know, because I, I value <laughs> the audience. The other Truth. thing is I feel like one time I didn't stick with her. Oh, was it? It wasn't Usman. There was somebody else who were pretty ride or die for that I went against the decision to stay with them for some reason and it cost me that right. night. <laughs> so I was like, I can't the go curse. against game friends. The curse. <laughs> So, I think Game Bread can but win you know many what? fights, but I don't, he's not going to win I'm a belt. I'm anti-Wonder Boy. <laughs> I know that's I know, so I opposite agree. major decision because people love Wonder Boy. I'm anti him. I do not like him. I, it's. But he's a wonderful human being in person. Yeah, yeah. He seems like a sweet guy. Yep. A sweet, sweet man. All American. Um, yeah, I just think, meh. Meh. I feel like Stephen Thompson's next gig is American Ninja, the reboot. You know that American Ninja series? That was fucking gangster as hell where they're training out in the woods in the obstacle courses in ninja suits. I think Stephen Thompson, if anybody else wasn't, if anybody else is holding the belt besides Woodley, Stephen Thompson probably be holding the belt. It's such a weird... Claudia Gadelia. <laughs> who now has a potential shot. No, because she lost Andrade and got murked. But even... Now, the. <laughs> we got so we get there we get there we get there so when we got where does Thompson go from here? Because uh, Costa uh, he still freshen up to, in the he, division he can prove himself to anyone we'll still watch him on cards sure, going forward sure, Johnny sure, we sure. already gave him the button get out of here so Stephen Thompson and Masvidal where do they go from here? Mm, Masvidal I think he can win multiple fights but I don't think he's gonna get the belt anytime no, soon. No, he's a gatekeeper. Yeah, I agree. Unfortunately, he's gonna be more in that ranks. Um. So he's going to have fun fights. Top and he's 10 gonna guy. Be, he's going to be an underdog to still pick in fights because people undervalue his potential. But it's still just That could be great for us because he'll have that double loss on his record, but we'll know. Right. Exactly. So that exactly. might be good for betters later on. With so Tom, we're still team game bread. Right. My dad used to say, um, when you don't know where to go, stay where you're at. And so we don't know where to go. There's nobody so, better than game bread right now. In our uh, right. bull right, package, right, 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 right. so he stays. It's game bread and bullets still. So with Thompson, Kamara Usman, book it. Oh, you know who's calling out Thompson? Till, Till Thompson. But Till's already got a fight, doesn't he? No. no. Thompson, no. Ooh, yeah, that's Till a, Thompson. That's a scary fight for Till because we just seen, when you get in there with a master in a spur, specific form. and I would Thompson have Till in that minutes, fight. I have to hesitate after what Just Thompson just showed me. He he really is. T Wood is still a specimen. I didn't like, feel like Masvidal ever got out of second gear, and so it wasn't yeah. that impressive of a win to me, a decision over a guy that never got out of second gear. Hey. In my head, Till is a murker, murker, and I'm not even like, oh, you're just saying that about Till now. No, listen to the tape. I've always liked Till. Yeah, I've I agree. We've Till. been before the, and we even called people were going to jump on the I feel like he was our Leslie after, Smith underdog yeah, pick of the week yeah, that yeah, week. We had him against yeah, Cowboy. Yeah. We were the we're only first. ones. Exactly. Exactly. So moving on to the first championship title. But I want to see Usman get up in there, and I hate to say this. This is what I, and you might even agree with me. Uh, uh-huh. Usman versus Masvidal. Hammer Usman Ooh, versus Jorge Masvidal. That, yeah, that's a good Double fight. win, double loss, that's but it's a big enough 
Yeah, thing. that's a big... A big enough name for Cameroon to get his name into that title contention. The other thing it could do, and it would be a weird person to take the spot, but if he beats Gamebred, could it make Cameroon Usman a ride or die? Because we really love that guy. We've been on his train since day one. Yes, and he fits all those all credentials. credentials. He fits all the credentials of being sound and... Aggressive and... Fun fight. IQ. All great IQ. Check, yeah. check, 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 check. Mm, that's a good runner. Fans, let us know. Who do you think we should be our next... At Twitter, Lesbo and the Bean on Twitter. Or you can email us at lesboandthebean at gmail.com. So the first belt contender, minus 600 favorite, Joanna Yezer Jacek, violence champion, Jan former champion. Jacek. Was just defeated in the first round um, by Euro Rose, Felg Rose, Nama Yunus. Uh, this was Rose coming into form and really not using the same old tactic against Joanna. Gadelia and Draj KK moved forward and threw punches. Rose sat back and picked her shots and fainted, 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 fainted. It really, if you look at, and I did see the uh, strike stats, I think I might have retweeted it, that... Uh, attempted strikes in the first round for Joanna in that fight was like 43, landed was 7. And that was because Rose was fainting so much, Joanna was throwing, and you can go back to a bunch of gifts. Joanna's just missing everything, and that's because Rose is taking a much more measured tactical one-strike type of approach, and that left landed more than once before it put her down. It landed four times that I can remember in that fight before it put Joanna down. And before the first time it put her down, and then the second time, which eventually knocked her out. And that's a right from a tiny 115 girl yeah. that actually fits the weight class. But Rose isn't somebody cutting a million pounds to get there. Never been a knockout And if you puncher. watch all the gifts of the knockout, mm. and of the, or it wasn't an actual TKO, but it was a tap to strikes, which we rarely see, but we're starting to see more in the sport now. Joanna today said that she never tapped to strikes. She was trying to move positionally on the MMA hour. It was one of the bits that I did catch it. What I say to that is, Huh. Huh. Right? I thought so, too, because I was like, that? And then he's, she even said, because Ariel immediately said, whoa, the announcers were saying you tapped the strikes, and it was called a tap the strikes. And she's like, no, 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 no. It was just a whatever, but I never tapped. It looked like a tap to me, too. It looked like three distinct I saw taps on the two. mat. At least two distinct taps. The other thing I have to say about Rose, which impressed me, and I think it was because usually Joanna is a lot more aggressive. But Rose not only kept at distance of Joanna's punch, but what she did was time her kick so perfectly. Is that how she she was trying to set up her right with yeah. the left, but the left ended up being the one causing the damage and right. landing every time. Right, right. So we never got to see the amazing right until she was doing the ground and pound. But that first leg kick, that Rose that threw. That was exactly what I was that about That bat to say. up against Joanna's That's leg. Exactly. That exactly. I think that Change. hurt her enough yep. that it gave Joanna hesitation respect. and a little bit of respect. So with Joanna and this, supposedly people have been saying, and you tweeted, you texted me literally a minute before the fight and saying this, this could be uh, Rose's Holly Ho moment. And to have a Holly Ho moment, you got to have a Ronda Rousey. And Johanna is the only God uh, every, it. for everything. She was and the people that are like Johanna's easily the best ever. No, she's still tied with the best ever. You still got to give Rhonda because now everyone can look and they see all the holes. It's easier. I've been listening to every analysis talk about the holes in Johanna's game. I, don't, I think that's bullshit. The holes in Johanna's game now all of a sudden how they're so bullshit. easy to see. All the holes in Johanna's game. Look at when she's kicking, she's dropping both her hands down. There's all this room for Rose to come over. All these holes all of a sudden. Mm -hmm. Yeah, there's maybe holes in every fighter's uh, game. Yes. But the fact is, is no one saw... How they put the game plan together to do it. Yes, and so Holly Holm made all of a sudden everyone knew exactly how to beat Ronda. Of it's course, not, right? It's so easy. It's Once so a easy, puzzle solved. But it took th that kind. Of, Rose had her that moment where yeah. she could lose three fights, four fights in a row now, and she will always be able to sell a million on Fox. She is Holly Holm now. She has secured her safety in the sport. And she's only 25. Right. <laughs> With this division, though. She's 7-2. Exactly. No, 7-3. 7-3. Right? Yeah, seven and 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 three. There was a couple... Champion. She beat... What 
people, even during the fight, DC, mm-hmm. oh, Joanna, I would say she's the best striker in the UFC. I would agree with Woman this, or man. I would agree with this, too. Best striker. And this little nugget, saying the Lord's Prayer. Well, Pat beautiful. Barry is also in a, a part of it, but yes. And training with our girl, the bullet, I think. Which and we she undervalued even... that. <laughs> we, should, we should fucking know better. Who's we... looking, who do you think is going to learn from it? And somebody who's beat Joanna three times in the only and, person and, in the yeah, world in Muay Thai. We should have fucking seen Shevchenko again, our girl fucking coming through on the underside. How, how do we not see this? We should have known better. We I think we said all this on air. Yeah, and I even said, think we said, Pepper Rose, she has a shot yeah, to win in flash. the first two rounds. Yep. We just said it was going to be a flash submission. I think us and everybody else on the planet, if Rose had a chance, it was going to be like a fly in our bar DJ. Yep. Everybody on the planet. Nobody saw that. Rose by knockout must have been the biggest bet on Bovada. But we... I don't even feel bad. No, because, because no I, one no, saw it. Nobody saw that coming. There was a couple of few people that were like, I just have a feeling about Rose this time. I, didn't I have hear to say early speckled. in the week. But n- nobody big, just like a Twitter murmur here and there. Right, right. So, Joanna, the reason that she isn't going to be in the same sentences as Aranda, though, is I feel like Joanna is going to come back and has already been saying, I'm going back. Don't worry about me. I think Joanna is the type of fighter I that can learn from I have to say another thing mistakes. that I said about this fight. Yeah. And. I don't know. I still will say, I don't know if we see Joanna fight at 115 again. Agreed. I thought that she was overlooking Rose to a point and then moving up to the 125. I think we said this as well, that she overlooked Rose. She looked too big. I right. said I the same she exact fear I had of Fat Noons when she couldn't make weight with, with her cyanitis, no. with the same feeling. She just looked too thick in the legs. I thought it was going to be a harder weight cut for her. We're never going to hear Joanna bitch about a hard weight cut ever. She's a professional. No matter how hard. So I feel like it could have been a harder weight cut. She overlooked somebody that's an amazing fighter that's growing quicker than I would say any other fighter in the sport right now. It has been for a long Leaps time. and bounds. Every fight. Yeah. Every fight. But people were already saying when she right. was first starting coming well, out of the tough house that like she was the next Ronda Rousey. I would agree. And I would say against PVZ and multiple other fighters, I've I've been on their rose wagon other than this fight because I JJ is still... I think that JJ can come back and beat Rose because JJ is the type of fighter... That this is her life, and she will study that punch, and it's not going to land the I don't think time. she and deserves an learned. immediate rematch. She got murked. It wasn't oh, close. It wasn't a decision. That's the controversy. It wasn't Wonder Boy Woodley. It wasn't where it was questionable or anyone had a doubt. It was clearly Rose's fight, and it was a five-round fight finished in the first. It's the same I feel about McGregor Aldo. You don't need an immediate rematch when you finish someone definitively. When it's a questionable thing or it even goes to the decision or it's close, yeah, fine. Give the fans a rematch because there's the naysayers out there. Other than that, I feel like when it's a murking, don't need to see it right away. you got to work your way back up the ladder. Which what this does to the entire division for me, I don't give a fuck. Because any matchup isn't JJ versus somebody. It's now Rose versus somebody else, which is a complete... Rose Andrade, Rose Gadelia, like... These are now fighters that have another potential of getting the shot. Because JJ had brutal forward. I think that Rose, again, is been in good, good fights. But I think that Andraj can put a pace on you that can break a lot of other fighters. And Rose still might be one of those people, even though mentally she has looked better than ever with this her mantras. This is what you have to say about her meditation. mentally. At 22 yeah. to 25, that's a huge leap in mental stability that we all take. Yeah, I'd agree. And then from 25 to 30, wow. Wow. How much security and just self-worth do you get from those sure. years? So I feel like for Rose, she has nothing but that growth, nothing but that time. Yeah. Oh. And so if she sticks on the path she's on, if she has Pat Berry, if she's Sticks with traveling with Shevchenko. Sticks with getting together with a lot of other great fighters. I see her with Megan Anderson. I see her. She is just this sponge. She, I think she could still surprise a lot of people. But I think everything you're saying, there's a really good shot. Rose versus Andrade. Or Rose versus, it, it'd probably be Andrade because Gadalia lost. Um, so Rose versus Andrade. 
I believe Rose would be the underdog on that. I think that a lot of people could see it as well because of the different type of pressure. That's it the just fight. shakes up. It, just, it shakes up the division. I don't care. What the fact I'm saying is, I don't give a damn because this is such a fun shakeup for is a the good division bet right now to everyone. JJ does not fight at 115 again. Yeah, I'd agree with that. I Unless she gets that. the rematch with Rose, she's not going to fight at yeah, 115. I'd agree with that 100. percent 100%. So, anything else left to say to be about I this think, huge uh, upset? Rose versus Andrade is the next fight you make, and I think JJ goes to 125, and we see a super fight with Shevchenko to open the division appropriately. Not with PVZ versus... Uh, Fucking JJ Shevchenko. JJ oh Shevchenko to open the 125 Ooh. division is the fight I want to see next. I just want to see the Waynes. That's the fight I want to see next. 125... I can't even – and you know J.J., she's going to be on a loss. She's going to be – I and I like J.J. Everybody was saying, oh, J.J.'s getting just like Ronda. People were talking about it before, how shitty she was being in the stare-offs and everything like that. That's what right we, what I was alluding to she's earlier. Getting shitty, shitty, shitty. Yep. So I think that would be interesting with her and Shevchenko. They've got to respect each other as martial artists. This has to be the, like, fourth time, fifth time they'd see each other across the – ring but this time it'll be the octagon i got my girl bullet in that all day i think you're about to get, watch jj lose twice in a row Ooh, i i still think jj has proven multiple times over that she is top and she isn't ronda she showed up the at top. the post fight presser yeah she doesn't just murk people in one round she does it in five rounds or all in between so moving on to the next fight another underdog coming through tj dillashaw Beating uh, was Cody Dillashaw Garbrandt. Was the underdog? He was the underdog at like plus 130. I think I, I put a bets on him at plus 130, but he was a bit of the underdog. Uh, Cody was coming in being the favorite with all of that footage that was strategically thrown out there a day before the weigh-ins. Sounded like TJ understood and thought that that was going to happen anyways. Didn't look like a full knockout to me. Looked like more of a knockdown. And TJ himself said, let the video play through, and we didn't get to see the whole video. Uh, it looked like TJ to me just, it wasn't a night-night. It wasn't like he stiffened up. It was just a, no, yeah, I'm I agree with you. I agree with you. Um, but Cody did land that shot, and I feel like even in the fight that they had, Cody landed that overhand right a few times, and TJ knew how to react to it. Uh, I called this, the bean was on, the, on TJ on this. I was saying, hey, he's going to have a better round, and that first round... By the bell. By the bell, TJ was saved in that first round. 100%, because he got caught by that right and didn't react to it so well. Right. And he recuperated. And what I would say to people would be like, I'll let that go any further, is, hey, a lesser fighters will not come back in the second round and win a fight. Champions will come back from something like that and win a fight. And that's why TJ took over. Um, I just think it was a gunfight. It was a shootout. These two were dueling. They were both throwing heavy punches. TJ landed. Cody had just as much of a percentage and landed a few prior to that. Um, I thought Cody won round one easily. Yeah, I, I agree, especially with the way it ended. Uh, I thought round two, Cody was pretty much winning until the head kick that knocked him out, <laughs> in my opinion. But it wasn't the kick. I think he landed a kick or two, but then it was a... Wasn't it like a left he or landed a, right? a, a right? I thought he landed a head kick that rolled his eyes back into his head. Oh. And as he went down, and then he did I'm, some ground and pound and was stop. Right? I thought that... I know the head kick landed, but I thought it was a... Oh, okay. I'm getting it confused with a later fight that we're going to get to. But either way... It was a gunfight. It was a duel. Either one of those fighters was landing shots on either opponent that will knock out most other fighters. And I don't want to see an immediate rematch right now. What I think for both of these fighters moving on is you fucked both of you. You fucked up. You talked about shit you shouldn't be talking about with all this juice talk. You're about to have your world turned inside out by media and USADA, WADA, and Yamama all the way around. Really? You think? I think so. I already forgot about it. Until you just said it just now. Oh, I get. I that's all I can think of is anytime is just like, oh, apparently all team alpha males on juice. Let's wait for those fights to fall out. Let's not bet on those mofos because now well, they've the all camp been getting tested. Everybody's been getting tested. But I think that there's now a marker on the sheets. 
I think there's a yellow highlighter that says these make sure that these are extra tested guys, whatever the fuck they can do. If not, put even the newest regimen of testing because that's what USADA is doing is they're putting in new uh, technology without telling the fighters and fighters are like, oh, well, apparently you can catch me for that. And uh, it was but all even if they catch them further back. Now they're saving urine as well. Yeah, but even if they are, I I don't know. I don't think any. I don't know what Cody does. I know TJ fights DJ. That has to happen. I that agree. has to happen. I agree. That's the fight. That's the fight. That's a fight. That's the fight. That's such a good fight. I don't care if it's a catch weight at 125 or 135, but I think TJ saying that he'll go down to 125. I think there's no excuse for Demetrius Johnson not to take the fight if TJ says he'll make the weight. And before when he was just a guy, like, I'm not getting involved in that. He's never made that weight. I think TJ could prove it to him one time, and him holding the belt is a lot of weight. If TJ moves down to 125, there's no reason for Demetrius. But if Demetrius doesn't want to do a catch weight, that's where I can see his that he has his out. But I agree. If TJ makes 125 pounds, there's no way that, D- T- uh, that DJ doesn't make that fight. Even if he's trying to cement a legacy here, that, and the other, don't worry about it. The closest person to your legacy just got taken out. She's going to have to put a hell of a comeback and then hold on for a while before someone gets close again, buddy. Like, yeah. You, you yeah, might be you're sitting fine. better. You might you're be sitting fine. better than you thought all you're of a sudden. You're okay. Yeah. <laughs> you're okay. You're not going to lose your anytime soon. And Bisping. Yeah. I'll, well, so, but, but well, Bisping yeah. had the most wins or something in the UFC. Ever. And like, there was all sorts of yeah. crazy fucking stats. There were so out. many records. Oh my, so many. And then most strikes the ever moves. landed in the UFC. Um, did you see? Maybe in that division. I don't want to spoil the ending, but did you see the stat of the first title bout ended in the first round, the second in the second, the third in the third? No. Good stat there, huh? <laughs> the what now? Tell me again. So the championship bouts, the first championship bout rose, uh, land, stopped in the first, and it was the first bout, championship bout of the night. Oh, uh, okay. That's pretty cool. Right? Agreed. Cool one. I, I liked that, that Rose is from area code 303 and finished it at 3 at minutes, 303, three I seconds. Did see, yeah. yeah, that was a good uh, one, too. Yeah, I think TJ versus DJ, I, if anything comes up with USADA or any, or water or whatever, I think it's really just Cody being a stupid schmuck. And it kind of makes me question where he's standing with his camp these days. I just think it's a, it, it's almost like a Freudian slip where I wonder if he's going to be the next guy that we see leave alpha male. I could really see that happening. I really, really could see that happening because what we've seen with alpha male mainly Uriah Faber himself, which is now apparently talking about coming out of oh, retirement to fight TJ Dillashaw. Fight, I don't want to see it. Stay in retirement. I don't want to fucking see it. No one see it. I don't want to no see it asking. at all. No one's asking. But you, I no will say asking. this. If TJ fights DJ, that's a money fight. Yep. If Dillashaw fights Faber, that is a money fight. Oh, I don't know. Well, I I've, hate it. Please. I would... I bet Faber is the biggest draw at the weight class. As crazy as that Still. sounds. Still. I bet he's the biggest draw at 135. He keeps his name in the game. And just, he, to me, he brought, he's the one that brought that sparkle to the division. No one cared until he was there. The California kid. He made it alive. He made it interesting. All of a sudden, you, he was good at the press conferences. I don't hate that. I don't hate that for TJ second match but him doing that makes cody not be able to take that shot which to me says there's problems in that camp <laughs> so there's still a ton of fun fights for cody put him up against anybody Anyone right in now. The division. yeah it doesn't matter for him anybody and i'm gonna be willing to I watch same with dj let's put dominic cruz versus cody too <laughs> I'm a let's watch give it me that. give me that let's watch it the same night i think that's a great fight the same night let's make it a tournament <laughs> yeah, let's bring Faber back and then Faber yeah, loses and dominic cruz it. loses yeah. they can fight again i'll boom, watch that <laughs> boom let's get into it yeah get bring Bellator it all back bring it all back so uh moving on to the headlining main event Coming out of retirement, we have George 
Rush, St. Pierre defeating Michael Bisbing. And to me, all I can say in this fight, we were big. He wasn't our underdog of the night because I think he was, there were near even, but uh, Bisbing ended up losing this. We were heavy on him, but the curse came in through his son. And as soon as I watched the embedded, I said, fuck. And I remember saying, fuck. <laughs> because his son has always picked against him. And even Bisbing made note of it. He said, hey, you're not supposed to pick me. You're supposed to pick him because every time you pick him, I win. And oh, oh. and then Bisping said, oh, no, no, no. He gets it. He understands. He understands. He's fine. And his son was just kind of like sitting there like a little dumb shit on the stairs. Just like, oh, I fucked my dad. <laughs> you just called uh, Bisping's son dumb shit. Yeah, I'm just I'm saying. So, oh, sorry, Bisping. <laughs> He's the ass. scariest guy. Sorry. He's right outside the window right now with one <laughs> eye and a swollen nose. Hey, well, we'll get some good footage here at Lat Beam. You can follow us on YouTube. You'll catch that. Bisping. I take a punch from beam. Bisping to retire. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I agree with that 100%. I, apparently, he, in the middle of this fight, he was also getting sued for a bar fight. Some dude no, no, got... no. Choked out at the gym. Oh, that's where, in the gym. LA, fight. I think it was like LA Fitness, one of those bougie LA gyms. I lived out in LA for a little while, so right. it's just a bunch of people looking at themselves in the mirror, hoping that someone will discover and, them at the gym. And there's also people, we've said it here multiple times, that are looking for a lawsuit, and... There's always jackasses. You can go on YouTube and fight, watch this guy who is literally, he's schizophrenic, unfortunately. I've seen enough of his videos, but he says he's the best in the world. He got in there with Dante Wilder and like called out his kids and wife and all this and went into the gym and got beat down. Um, but that's what happened to Michael Bisping, a guy who is rationally not all the way there, all of a sudden got in over his head and tried to take Bisbing's head off and Bisbing said fuck you buddy I'm still a human and taught him a lesson unfortunately in the world that we live in the no United I don't States. even think they were at like the gym like sparring or anything like that uh -huh. I think it was like an LA fitness like workout gym oh like shit. just some dildo with weights I think it was something like but there's some people douche. looking they know there's people looking for lawsuits is kind of what I, I was agree with you anyways. yeah you're totally on the right track with it but yeah. before this fight right so he was dealing with that like he the week dealing, of fights. Right. His son fucking jinxed the living shit out of him. And GSP looked every bit of the fucking TRT as I ever seen GSP. He was thick. If you didn't stay tuned from last episode, Hogwatch. Oh my <laughs> gosh. I'm surprised he made weigh-ins with that fucking thing. The piglets getting on. I, I say once a black woman goes GSP, she doesn't go back. So GSP was very filled out. He said so in his post-fight, not in his post-fight presser, because he went directly to the hospital due to some elbows off of Michael Bisping's back. Uh, takedowns were there for GSP in this fight. GSP looked good against any other 185-er. Give me that fight for GSP. I think anybody in the top echelon of that division is not an easy fight for George St. Pierre. And... I don't know where GSP goes if he defends this title or if he tries to fight at 170. Okay. So what do you think it goes on for the winner in this one? Who would you rather see George St. Pierre fight? Right. And first, let me just say, I'm officially a fan of George St. Pierre. I'm a huge fan. Beautiful jab, as we called here as well, the whole night. And everything, just the way he came back, I, I feel like I got to see about him vintage it was vintage gsp it really was what everyone loved but building up to it at first i was like "Ugh, this guy's lame at the press conferences this guy's lame this guy's lame but i think what we saw on every single one of our champions and it's usually something we notice when we get the opportunity to do later shows in the week which hopefully if everything keeps going right with the podcast we'll get the opportunity to do the second show after weigh-ins in the week um they were all the champions were way too emotional, way too emotional, all of them. And Michael Bisping was way too emotional the whole time. And at first I was like, he's trying to sell it. He's trying to sell it. Yep. George doesn't get it. But I think what Rose said got to me a little bit is there's enough stuff going on in the world. They fight enough inside the octagon. They put on the show inside the octagon. It's an entertainment. Let's answer the questions. We don't have to go back and forth. We can talk about each other's skill sets. There's so many other things we can talk about than hate. Like, why can't we just give each other hugs? I want So George handled himself with so much class up the whole entire time. There was nothing George did 
that I could pick on or pick apart or, you know, even his like fire burns in water and things <laughs> I hear about him backstage, like yep. Brendan, I am terrified. He might have said that again ten times. Yeah. But oh, if yeah, you can magnify that energy and turn your fear into that sort of strength, isn't that what we're that's how you control the world? It's is by overcoming fear. It's a definition of and courage. It makes me and he's going against a bigger guy. He's coming back after four four years. Yeah, he trained the whole time. But coming back into that thing and then I think the thing that was just the nail in the coffin of my whole like okay I'm officially a fan of George St. Pierre is he tweeted out it was the greatest night of his career I saw that and I loved it so for a guy at his experience at his level everything he's done the fact that he's still achieving dreams and having the best nights of his life it's pretty fucking cool yeah so it makes me a fan of the lizard I wish he'd change his name to that though (laughs) (laughs) rush baby rush Oh, I remember when he first started fighting with double knee pads. He used to be patented coming up through his amateur career, double white knee pads. And that double leg was coming in. Looked beautiful. So what do you think happens for Bisping? Bisping. Okay, things about Bisping. Still amazing takedown defense. Still best cage walker maybe in the game. Get those stand-ups, right? Him Amazing. getting up off of his back Amazing. is still and pretty unreal. I would say he looked like a big-ass Nate Diaz on his back with them elbows. I was so impressed okay. with how good his game was GSP on his back. GSP didn't go to hospital for nothing. It, it was all the damage GS. The most damage GSP took mm-hmm. was when Michael Bisping was on his back. <laughs> right. Agreed. 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 But, again, that ground and pound by GSP looked really, really good. Um, Michael Bisping, in the division, he can't. The type of guy he is, and he can still sell a huge ticket in Europe for the UFC. Uh-huh. He can get another huge paycheck. I'm sure he, he can has, beat a lot of fighters still. And he can not only beat a lot of fighters. I think he's ready to retire. I think he was ready to retire before Luke Rockholt and just so happened to take the fight, and then 100%. he became the champ. I think he would have finished the fight then, and then he was like, "Oh shit!" And then he fought Dan Henderson, and they, okay, I'll be the champion, but I'm gonna get this surgery. Are you guys good that I'm gonna be out for a year? <laughs> yeah, we don't care, Miss me. You can do whatever you want. So then he comes back and he fights George and sells another big ticket. So who do you put Bisping up against? You put him in Europe. Do you want to watch Bisping Rockholt 3? I That's the easy. That's the easy one. What I would want to see, though, is Bisping Sousa. I don't want to do that to him when he doesn't. I do. <laughs> <laughs> I think. I think that's a real. That's a great fight because Taz is still a fucking monster, and he needs to get back up there real quick. He he can't be fighting fucking some bullshit fights. And I think Bisping's the perfect. What about Salazar for Rockholt first? Uh, didn't we? Uh, I th- feel like Rockholt might have been ducking that one for a little while now. I'd see it. It happened already in Strike Force. I want the. I want the. Rockholt, since he's just back in, I think he can fight that fight and then be right in title contention again after whoever wins out of mm-hmm. if GSP fights Whitaker. That's the question. Dana says he's going to fight Whitaker, which immediately makes me think he's not fighting Whitaker. Agreed. And I'm saying mm-hmm. for GSP, the easier fight, watching him fight again, it might be Tyrone Woodley. I think that that's likely to happen as well. Also for GSP, Brunson, G- or I mean, uh, Bisbing, Bisbing, Brunson. That's the fight I want to see at 185. I don't care about Brunson enough oh. as a main event. Oh, damn. I think that that's an interesting stylistic matchup. I think that that is... If he stand up, it's a good fight for Bisping. I think it's a good fight for both fighters. Ooh, got him. Stumped them. So. I think I'd rather see that, though, than Rockholt Bisping. I think I'd actually rather see Derek Brunson versus Bisping. You might be right. Because we've seen the Rockhold one is just kind of like, but it's the natural. If it's not the Rockhold, that's the type of fight. But it's obviously the Rockhold fights the next. It just has the third fight all over it. They're one and one, especially as decisive as it was. But Rockhold might be wanting to overstep him because why do you want to fight someone who's not the best? So, my question Uh Do you want to see GSP fight? Tyron Woodley more or GSP versus Whitaker more? Whitaker. But I'm the type to do that. 
I want to see the test. I want to see the vintage, the harder fight. Ooh, they're both hard fights. They're both hard. They're both fights. hard fights. I think Tyron Woodley Whitaker would be a good fight. ass fight. This is where GSP is gonna be like, uh, uh I think Matt Hughes. <laughs> I know, I don't know. Oh, oh that's horrible. Too soon. Hashtag too, too soon. soon. Sorry. <laughs> Hashtag too soon. Hashtag I too soon. I did oh not my. plan. I did not mean Matt Hughes like that. I did. I forgot he was just out of the hospital. <laughs> I want to call out Matt Hughes. I, am, I forgot Matt Hughes. <laughs> the aliens made me forget Matt Hughes. <laughs> I am sorry, Matt Hughes. Get well soon. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, yeah. So. so that'll be the question, but I'm interested in both fights. I think... GSP Woodley could get rather boring and that makes me nervous like we do not need to see Woodley in another boring fight and that is why I just feel like UFC's pissed enough off at Woodley give him Colby Covington they're pissed off enough at Woodley feed him a guy that he thinks is an under guy but it'll give everyone wants that division to be more exciting That'll make Woodley do what Woodley does. Go out there and murk Colby. Either way, one of the fighters will win the fans, and the 170 will be rolling again. Right. Anyways, it was a great night of fight. It was some of the better night of fights that you were ever going to see in the UFC. If you get a chance, you must go back and see it because, um, yeah. Okay, here's my question for you live on air. It's a lot of pressure. There's a lot of people listening. I have Wednesday Day available. You have Wednesday Day available. (laughs) Do we do the breakdown Wednesday Day? Or do we give it and just do it now? Either way, we can get into hot topics, but it's... What do you think? I think we we should probably give them a bonus show later on and just do the breakdown individually. Yeah, we'll give them the breakdown later in the week and then we'll just go into hot topics right now. It'll give me some chance to study up a little bit because there's fighters in the card that I'm interested in getting your link. Even the two fighting in the main event, Poirier and... Right. uh, I want to know, there's a lot about these fighters I don't know about or what matches I should go back and look up if I make... There's actually a lot of... um, depth in the fights and they deserve their explanation there's only one debuter that i can think of yeah so So, there's a lot i want to get into and really i feel like it would be pushing it yeah so i think we just go into a hot topics of other shit going on in ufc after we broke apart the meat of that fight if you haven't subscribed i know that the podcast app has actually been having issues the with the new update the subscriptions have been bad in my podcast app on my iPhone has been garbage as of late, and they're they're, they're doing making that issues. Forced upgrade, everyone. Uh, you gotta go get your iPhone plan, eight, your iPhone seven, your iPhone X, or they're obsoleting your old yeah, ass phone. Planned by obsolescence. Upgrades. So definitely, if you have had same issues with your iPhone and you're looking for us, remember to resubscribe because you're gonna be unsubscribed. I've had to do it to all of mine as of late because of. It's been, again, dog shit. So you need to get your shit together. iPhone X. I get I got no money. But you can always find lesbointhebean.com or we also have our site on Libsyn. So uh, follow us at Twitter. You can always hit us up and we will tell you where to find us on lesbointhebean.com. But we don't have to finish yet if there's shit to talk about. I know we usually do that at the end. <laughs> I, pray, I was thinking, oh, it's You're like, like oh, the shit, outro. It's like the outro. Shit, I got to get ready. <laughs> so. Let me clear my throat. <laughs> Let me clear my throat. <laughs> don't kick us off Twitter or YouTube. <laughs> oh, shit. Copyright infringement. I know. It sounded just it like it. Just trumpets. Like Goddamn. It. Goddamn. They were like, George St. Pierre's on the show and they're throwing. <laughs> 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 Okay, what else is going on in the world? It was such a crazy night of fight. Of course, Colby Covington and his predecessor, not predecessor, his money, his glory hole, uh, the honeypot, owner of American Top Team. Did you see him have his promo on the WWE? Not that it was WWE, it was like CDW. I don't know the wrestling terms these days, but I saw a promo cut, a gif of him talking about, or it was a clip, it wasn't even a gif, it was like a minute on Twitter of him cutting a promo on the MMA and being like, MMA, you are 
20 years behind what I've been doing. And we've been saying that here at Lab B for a while. And he's giving away all of the secrets. Trade the secrets. Kingdom. Yeah, he's telling them like, oh. But what he modeled, I feel like he's talked about it before, is gladiator stables. He specifically went in and looked at Roman stables of how they created the guys that were the gladiator type of fighter and how they weaned them to be champions. And he's fucking doing that with MMA fighters. Genius. I'm like, what, what, what the fuck? Oh, he's a billionaire or million, multi-millionaire for a reason. So, really fun. If you get around Twitter, definitely check that out. ATT. I have to tell you something, though, about ATT, what I was thinking in this fight. I think they're a dying camp. I mean, I just, I don't know if they need new head coaches. I don't know if there's too many stars there, too many big names that they're not getting the right attention that they need. People have left that camp specifically for that because... Some people really value that specific one-on-one. Like, no, it's all about me. Look at the champions TJ. right now. And all the champions right now. The three that we just saw get Rose their Rose as well with Pat Barry. Rose, GSP. Yeah, he and he broke off a TriStar more than I had thought. I had started to see reports right up before his fight that he actually wasn't training with most of the TriStar guys. He had his own special His Freddy training Rhodes thing training looks like Cal, uh, Al, Calvin Drago from yeah. Rocky IV. It is laser technology shit. You can see the needle marks. Right it's in insane. Like, it's insane. I think that he is... But I, I, I just think the Bullet Valentina. We're just starting to see this evolution of these fighters. And I would even say Conor McGregor. I think he takes John Kavanaugh, but then he's not necessarily going to other... Uh, fight camps or gyms, but he's training with different people, bringing in other specialists, Styles, yeah. doing it. And I think that is becoming the way to build a champion. And so if you're at a gym that, I mean, it doesn't have Robbie Lawler anymore of recent, but it used to. You have Dos Anjos, you have JJ, you have Amanda Nunes. How do you, as a person that, let's say you're you know, not as big of a name as Justin Gaethje, but you know, let's say you're that style of fighter, you're coming in, you need a better ground game, you need a better this. How do you get the proper attention that you need when you already have this much celebrity around you? And the amount of celebrity, the extra interviews, the camera crews in there, your awestruckness that you're like, holy shit, I'm totally warming up next to JJ, <laughs> you know, or I'm rolling with JJ today, you know, which might be nice too, but they probably keep her well away from people preparing for From fights. the weirdos, because there's people like multiple <laughs> oh, oh, you know, oh, Come here, oh, 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 <laughs> Yo, cupcake. I just want a little cupcake. Oh, uh, Misha. I miss Misha. <laughs> How crazy of a world do we fucking live in, though? Like. Oh my gosh, crazier every day. Unbelievable <laughs> amounts of shit is going on with the best card we've ever had. The amount of just... I didn't know that the world broke while we were watching UFC. I, mean, I woke up and was like, what? <laughs> what is going what on? What the fuck? Here's my question, and I am not making light of any shootings, but I really thought, in my heart, if I were to be in this country somewhere and somebody even thought of having a motherfucking mass shooting, please let me be in Texas. Because those motherfuckers are armed! Guess what happened? Yeah, I mean, you know what happened. I know you listen to this stuff just like I do. He, the neighbor across the street, heard the shooting, went and got his weapon in his house, ran out, shot him. He got in his car and drove off. So he stopped him from killing more people. I'm just surprised somebody wasn't in the church that was like, blah, blah. That but was carrying in a church? I people, agree. Everybody in Texas, in Texas yeah, has... Uh, they get carry yeah, old school style in I Texas. Agree. Like full on old school cowboy where they but, have the two holsters. It's, it's a house of a lord and I can see where like potentially a They're also old school southern where you're yeah. right. They uh, might be like, I'm all take my lo- guns off at the door. Yeah, it's respectful and it's just like, it's a house of God. Nothing will happen to me here. And they... And they shouldn't as anywhere. And... A, how do you stop a bad guy with a gun? A good guy with a gun is all I got to say. <sighs> I know. The sad part is we can't get the guns away from the bad guys. It's the cat's out of the bag. It's unfortunate. Pandora's box is open. Uh, okay, back to fights. So. That was our, us getting political. <laughs> the cat is out of the bag is the way the gun argument ends. Yeah. So, 
We already talked about the Whitaker GSP potentials. Do you think DJ will take the fight with TJ? I think that he has no choice if TJ is willing to move down. And if he... I hope so. I hope he has no choice. Other than that... (laughs) I mean, really, who else does he fight at this point? What is an interesting DJ fight if it's not TJ? He already broke the record. Let him... (laughs) Yeah. Demetrius Johnson. Demetrius Mighty Johnson. Take the goddamn fight! (laughs) Get off your Twitch (laughs) and take the fight. Take the fight. (laughs) Push yourself. I want to see... That would be the biggest challenge to me. And right now, the stylist, the styles that I'm seeing TJ br- bring up, the fact that he came back from such a deficit against Cody, his fight career is probably, if you look at the guys he's fought and the path he's taken to get that belt, not just the first time, but the second time, TJ Dillashaw has the hardest record in the game. Yeah. His, yeah, he's monsters. fought monsters for years yep. and he no one's given him respect even when he held the belt the first time he was still favors that's probably I another reason he left listen to this yep. he was in favor of shadow still even with the belt everybody that's what i feel like i was alluded to earlier like everyone has this same thing where it's the alpha male gym not you if you're the champ it doesn't matter it's the alpha male gym kind of the same things happening at top team but i think top team has such quality training that Regard, you could put up with that bullshit for a couple months and then move on, which a lot of fighters do. They don't make it their home like Joanna has for two years now. A lot of other fighters will do that. Just, oh, I went down there for six months. I came back. Like, I learned a lot. Um, yeah. Or the same way that, like, Jackson Wink or I don't mind yeah. Poppers in. Yeah, exactly. Cerrone does a lot of that type of what stuff. What does Rose need to work on? Where does she go? Ooh. I think she stays on this style and I think she keeps at training with bigger girls. Yeah, she still she still has a many many fights again. Anybody for Rose? I'm just so because excited so, for Rose. Right for that division in general. Did you happen to catch any of the Bellator fights? Yes. The night before. So what was some of your highlights? Really, because I Bellator just saw. Shine, um, I believe. A crazy gnarly knockout by our old school friend Mr. Bader. Right. Um, and Brad then and there was was it a gnarly kick into mm-hmm. the fence? Blah! And uh, FYI, you were totally right. It was a right hand from TJ or a left hand from TJ that made Cody's eyes roll back into his head. Okay. Not a kick. Okay, Not a left okay. kick. It was a left punch. Yeah, I feel like the kick might have been GSP that landed before. for Bitcoin. Yeah, I think you're totally right, yeah, too. I got the two mixed it. up. So thank you for that. Bellator, uh, the knee. I can't remember. He was a wrestler, division stud, um, landed a knee that... Scary knockout, honestly. That young man was dead. 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 He was for us a hobby dead. I mean, uh, I mean, <laughs> Eamon's a hobby dead. The motherfucker was out cold. <laughs> Zahavi. <laughs> <laughs> that motherfucker died too on the mat. It took him a while to get up, unfortunately. That elbow just. Oof. Um. Did you see that disgraced former Dallas Cowboy Greg Hardy won his first MMA debut? Debut? I did not see that. Um, I know that there was also a few other, like, A1, C1 cards that I didn't end up catching, but... They say that's when the sport really changes, is when professional athletes of that stature... Or when kids start going, when when the money's in UFC, that it is in other professional sports, and we see that stature of athletes start to sway toward us, that's when the game changes. That's when we see the next evolution of the sport. But the money has to be there. But Conor McGregor and people like him and John GSP. Jones and GSP, it shows that there is potential yep. for money to be there. A good topic that is something to think of is GSP does still have Under Armour and other corporate sponsors behind him. And he did, did at when the time he left had a lot of leverage, not as much as Connor ever has because Connor is still strategically uh, positioned himself, but GSP has some old school contracts too. Well, they say if Connor's not fighting, there's certain markets that they cannot reach in the pay-per-view market mm-hmm. that Connor was hitting, but they haven't been able to hit him since GSP fought. Which 
Dana White said that over a million, easy. Which good for them. I Because I was thinking 700. We never made predictions on it, but in my head I thought 700. Yeah, that's exactly around where I was fe- feeling. And to go over a million proves that GS- GSP is still a draw. Does it take away any of Connor's leverage as far as owning part of the company? Yes. It, that's where this is a bargaining chip for the UFC because now that you have GSP to hold against Connor, um, but this is also where GSP can say, oh, 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 I heard this Connor kid's not getting paid this much. I was getting paid this. What What's going to happen? Because Connor's still making more of whatever GSP was. What kind of contract time. do you think GSP signed or do you think he was on an old contract? Mm, so he probably got paid shit tons more money than the other fighters because of his Under Armour contract coming in with the Reebok. All of that plays. That's exactly what I'm thinking. That all of those other things play. And GSP can get into one of these bullshit situations as well and just be like, I have the belt. Make me fight. <laughs> like maybe i would hire do, again yeah exactly like he hasn't stepped away so. something about the ufo thing there was other people that saw it other fighters wasn't rashad evans in the car with <laughs> following him i said rashad evans fell in the cheetahs from a cheetah's kick during that span of time when he was yeah but they were space. together no I don't think I've ever heard. Oh, I thought he was in the car behind him or something. Like, they were in cars or something. Like, people have collaborated his story. That something weird happened to him? Like, really? or that they, they all saw that. the UFO Oh, or I was trying to make a bad joke. as like, when he was being knocked out, he's all fucking GSP. He's, he's like, all yeah. lights as well. Yeah, exactly. When Machida's foot was landing off of his face, he saw Who lights. do you think wins, TJ or DJ? DJ. 60% of people right now think... TJ. And I have DJ in that as well, right now. DJ have, knows how to fight bigger fighters. I got Demetrius as a well in that. Yep, 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 yep. Do you think this makes the UFC more exciting that there's three belts changed? This is the hands? best card. The, the, the magic of this card is how much it shakes up the UFC. The residual of this is just like... You know how much we have to talk about? You we know needed why you're a breath. Show? We, had a, we have Tyrone Woodley, which is a stagnant champion. You know, right. he's stagnant. Uh, we have Connor holding up two divisions. So then when Aldo had the belt, no one gave him any credit for having the belt. And now we got Max Holloway making it flow again. But because Max Holloway is such a beast, the next fights that we have for Max Holloway are kind of like, okay, let's give Edgar the shot again and, you know, whatever. But he's such a beast that he's going to lock up that division for a bit. And so we were kind of stale. We were at a stalemate everywhere. Dom was holding that title for so long. So Cody was our fresh breath and he was injured. So we had all these. Michael Bisping held that title stale for a while. Hey, you're right. We needed a shakeup in the UFC. Get things. JJ was unbeatable. Exactly. Yeah. And it was just like we were going to see more of the same. And all of a sudden, interesting matchup. Days and days and days. I loved it. It was such a good card. It's people. Okay, is GSP the goat? No. Oh, I don't know. No, I don't Brendan. know about that. I want. My instinct was to say no because he came back in and fought Michael Bisbing, which a lot of people would say is not the best fighter in the division right now. But we all thought Bisping mercs GSP. Agreed. Oh, GSP was fucking huge. Hogwatch. God damn, we underestimated Hogwatch. We can't call it Hog. We have to think of a new name. Oh, Anaconda. Anaconda Watch? Yeah, I think it has to be Anaconda. I think you have to be like, I was like J-Lo over here. Like, <laughs> ah! <laughs> We were like J-Lo and Ice Cube when GSP came out in those white pants. <laughs> oh, huh. If he got hard going on stage, he would just pass out. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> uh, damn. Sorry, sometimes I can't help but stare at the dick. Even as a <laughs> If you put any well, body well, part I'm out just trying there, to think of a like, name. whoa! I'm trying to think of a different, uh, an alternative to a hog watch. A... He got that conda going on in his pants. He, he got, got a... that conda cam. <laughs> He got that conda tent in his pants. He got a tent full of anacondas. <laughs> it's like, you know, one of those cans that you open a peanut can yeah. and the snake's like, bing! 
<laughs> but you can't say anything about a peanut no. can and talking about did de- de- he got did de- de- Do you think GSP would be embarrassed talking to us like, about this? Let be, here. please stop talking about my dick. He would <laughs> say, let be, stop talking about my fucking dick. Cut that part out. <laughs> I, I don't have it anymore. The aliens do key. <laughs> I'd be like, I could see that you had it in them white they pants. Impl- they implanted a new one. <laughs> I did like that Beck Rawlings tweeted out with the, all that talk about being mentally weak, Rose never tapped to strikes. So... Oh, controversy in that. JJ herself said, herself said she did not... You crazy. I did not I say this. Uh, I Beck, tap. Yeah, fight at 115, and there's no one to fight JJ. Zip it! <laughs> oh, that's a good Zip fucking it. point. Good fucking point. I would not take that fight for under a hundred million dollars. And I don't know if you saw Justin Gaethje tweeted out like a video, and he fully cried. He was like, "I am so proud of Rose. I can't even hold back, and I feel like I should show you guys." They're in the same camp though. Like He's they, like, they work so proud. somewhat together. And so he tweeted out, and it was like really emotional Good that this him. other fighter is like, "I am so." proud of this person like the whole it was such a mountain it wasn't just because she won a fight it was a mountain of a fighter like no one thought she was gonna win a 600 beast. it was holly home it holly was home. a holly home moment it was wow i ran around my house with socks on like i was on an ice rink where i almost thought i should sit down i'm gonna hurt myself <laughs> Got lightheaded. I was like Deaf Comedy Jam running around my house like Martin Lawrence said something funny. I was like, oh my god, I can't believe it. Um, firefighter Barb sat there like mouth agape, not making a word. Not breathing. For the whole time I ran around the house like a monkey, which seemed probably like a full 20 to 30 seconds before I was just like, ah, I can't believe this. Barb just sat there. Uh, dumbfounded, like, dumbfounded, speechless. Still back to the. You know what's so weird to me? So for the Holloway Edgar poster, the Overeem Naganu fight. Uh-huh. Um, and I never noticed it, but I know fighters can't wear anything else into the ring. Do you notice? Or I have noticed it before, always, but I always wondered if it was part of marketing, and it totally is. The monster logo in Overeem's head. Oh uh, no. <laughs> Yeah. I always wondered if it was just like his style. No. But then when the poster came out and that is clearly the monster logo just Oh well the, never mind. I thought it was uh, gonna be up in the corner. Um Yeah, how he has he has like in his haircut three cuts. Do you think it's it's always sponsor? been there? Yeah, right. Like the three cuts have been there sponsor? since the sponsors weren't he allowed to be on that. Yeah, and so now that I see it on the poster, and they have Nagano's head glowed as well, just so they could... cut the... Yeah, just so they could make Overeem's glow, the monster logo. It's like a little sneaky advertisement placement in the UFC 218 poster. UFC 218 is looking thick. Looking thick. I can't wait for UFC 218. What a good end of year. It all came together. It, there were some good cards. There's been some rough And Dana cards, said, and you know, everyone was heavy. saying this has got to be the worst year ever for UFC. And Dana said, no, actually, we're on course to have way the best year ever. Because you have to remember, we got a huge piece of the McGregor fight. Yep. And that's what everyone has to remember. That they got at least what they would get off a million pay-per-view by. At least minimum. Mm-hmm. So it wasn't a bad card for and, them. It wasn't a regular $60 card. And the other thing I liked, I don't know if you saw it, what Chase Sherman tweeted out. Oh, I did. T- it's that TLC one, dancing, but it has the faces of GSP and Dillashaw and Rose Nama Yunus. I thought it was pretty funny. You guys should follow Chase Sherman. He is a funny, the vanilla gorilla. I'm, I feel like he's going to be coming up here pretty soon again in a, a fight card. I feel like he was signed to something I can't think off the top of my head right now. But any other fights as of late and or any other How was DC news? to you as the commentator? I the love gross! DC. The I, gross! <laughs> I fucking love Dan Cormier. You be you, boo. You be I'm you. ready if... Joe Rogan doesn't do every pay-per-view. I love DC there. I fucking love DC. I love that he doesn't take the shit. He's a dad. He's the fucking guy who always says, come on, 
get your shit together, be a man. Like, he's just that type of a person. The commentating. And he backs it. And you he could probably agree. Doing. Uh-huh. I used to not like Bisping, but since he's been commentating, I like him. Yep. I used to not like DC, but since he's been commentating, I like him. I used to not like Dom. You probably always like Dom, but I used yeah. to not be a fan, yeah, but yeah. since he's been commentating, I really like him. So I just, I'm digging those what do you guys. Think the the, I'm not a huge fan. He's been doing a lot I like of Tom Hardy. Movies. He's my fave, fave, my boyfriend. Oh, you didn't even say that. At Tom Hardy. But he's not doing boyfriend. big reviews. He's doing all the UKs, Australians, and all those. Yeah. With who's his fucking name? The one I who... almost remembered it the other day. I want to say it's like Chris Hicks. You know, it's like something <laughs> so Chris Smith. You know, it's something so bland. We have to Tom figure Hardy's out that guy's kid. name and give him a shout out with his skinny jeans. I guess that's it this week. I think it was a great week of fights. I'm burnt out. That's why I can't even. It was such a good week of fights and talking about it again. I can't even give the energy to the next card that it deserves. Yeah, it's a I good agree. Card. It's thick. It is. There's a lot of juice to the squeeze. Quick, off the top of your head, right now, before we go out, before everybody follows us at Lesbo and the Bean on Twitter or at lesboandthebean.com or like and subscribing everywhere and following us on YouTube and iTunes. And before they do all that and show us the love, who is going to win Dustin Poirier versus Pettis? Dustin Poirier. That ruins the whole next show. <laughs> it might not. I think Dustin Poirier too right now. Yeah. I, Other so I, is he an underdog? It doesn't ruin it at all. <laughs> I think he's an underdog. Is he? Uh, he might Uh-oh. be. He might be. Might be barking up with that Leslie Smith pit. Oh. That's all I got to say. Stay tuned. Have a good week. Oh, wait. We'll see you Wednesday. Bonus show. Apparently. Look at We're giving you our word. Oh, the, it is out. The word is out. The word so. is out. It's over. <laughs>